To say that Bioware are working around the clock would be an understatement. They are literally working day and night to make sure this game is in a place the community can be happy with. It wouldn't be too far-fetched to say that Anthem pretty much has had one of the buggiest launches ever. The VIP demo and the open demo have pretty much been a train wreck for the most part for many people. In fact, when the game even launched, the PC version just basically fell apart for many many players. This along the way gave it a ridiculously bad stigma, with Metacritic dropping it down to around 40-50%, to so the game hasn't had the best start. However, one thing you can say about Bioware is their constant communication with the player base. Not only that, their ability to turn around fixes because most of this is server side and they're able to push it to the client is insanely quick. It's really really impressive to see how fast Bioware are actually working. And this leads me on to my next topic which is patch notes. It seems we have a patch today. It does look like it will be checking for 46 gigabytes, so you do need to have 46 gigabytes spare on your hard drive. However, the patch itself is only around 3.1 gigabytes overall. But with the way the file systems work on the PlayStation 4, and I assume possibly the Xbox as well, I know it's the same thing for the PC. You do need to have the full file size because essentially what it's doing is checking the complete file size, making sure everything is there, and then patching it with the patch files that it needs to patch. With that said, the overall patch size is around just over 3 gigabytes. So what are the patch notes? Well, the patch that was pushed this morning had the following changes. The tethering timer for missions has been increased. Players should now have more time to catch up to their squad before seeing a countdown timer. That's pretty awesome, I like that. Players should now have more time to catch up to their squad before seeing a countdown timer. So. Though it sounds contradictory, what I assume this means is that the tethering itself triggers at a certain point the countdown timer you see. That countdown timer will now appear at a later time with a more relaxed tethering before you get dragged into the furthest player. Which is a nice change, we have been requesting this, we have been requesting for relaxed timers, so hopefully this is going to do the job. The Swarm Tyrant encounter in the Tyrant Mind Stronghold can no longer be reset by the entire squad exiting to the main menu and rejoining the session in progress. Now what was happening here was that players were getting to the Tyrant Mine final boss, killing the final boss and then exiting out. Because the timer for the mission didn't end, because it has 10 seconds, when they came back in it would place them back with the boss being alive. Now I appreciate we wanted a longer timer so we can actually you know use our emotes and things like this. This wasn't a gateway for us to find exploits. Seriously people, exploits are bad, it ruins the game, it ruins the longevity of the game and then you complain that there is nothing to do. Well if you're exploiting the game for more loot, what do you think is going to happen? You're ultimately hurting yourself. Finally, players are no longer able to reopen chests that have already been looted in strongholds. And this was again essentially the same thing, you'd open a chest, crash out, come back in, and then reopen it again and you could continually do this especially in the higher GMs for that elusive loot. Again another exploit. Next we move over to the big topic, loot, and Ben Irving came on record and released a post to detailing what it is that we will be getting. Ben Irving says, hey all, first off thank you for all the feedback around loot drops. This is what we have heard, many inscriptions are not useful to the item they are attached to. Due to this, players need to get many masterworks of the same item to find a good one. Players want the frequency of masterworks drops to increase to help with the above, or they want us to change how masterworks inscriptions work so they are more useful. Which is pretty much what I said in my video. If they're not going to increase the drop rate, they need to fix the inscriptions so the inscriptions actually matter. Because right now, when you get a Masterworks, it can roll anything and it's pretty much broken. Considering half of them don't apply to your weapon or your gear, it's pretty bad. He goes on to say there is more feedback, but the above is a summary. This is our plan for changes to go live on February 28th or March 1st, Central US time. Inscriptions are now better for the item they are on. This applies to new items earned in Anthem, not existing ones in your vault. So the patch update where the inscriptions will actually improve will be applying to any new item you get after the patch is installed. All the current ones you have, the broken ones, will remain broken and their perks will not change. If an inscription applies only to the item it is on, a gear icon, 
it will be useful to that item, otherwise the inscription will provide a javelin wide benefit, which is pretty cool. For example, an assault rifle will not have an item specific plus pistol damage inscription. It may have plus electric damage, suit wide inscription, call for lightning bills, but it won't have anything that's detrimental or pointless to the weapon itself. Some more information below he says. Removed uncommon white and common green items from level 30 drop pools. This means once you hit level 30 you'll be getting blue, purple, orange and yellow. This was a highly requested change and we agree. So that's that. The change is done. The deed is set. We have reduced the crafting materials needed to craft masterworks from 25 masterwork embers to 15 masterwork embers. As you salvage or harvest you should be able to craft more masterwork items to get the inscriptions you are looking for. Now that inscriptions are more relevant to their item this should yield better results for players. So this is a nice quality of life improvement. 25 embers was a little steep. Now with the inscription change, the fact that they're more relevant now and reducing this by 10 embers to 15, it means you can actually craft more and it gives you that bit more incentive to go out and find more masterwork embers in the open world. There is also additional inscription change details. It's hard to write a short version of this, but I'm going to try. If we need to add more information later, we can do that. So currently there are a large pool of inscription options available to roll on items. The inscription pools are generic, for example weapons, much like I said in my previous video. Every masterwork item has four inscriptions, major primary, minor primary, major secondary, minor secondary. So I wasn't too far off in my last video when I was talking about a two tier system, it currently actually does exist. This will now change. Each item type now has a specific set of inscription options for each of their inscription pools. The pools are smaller and are targeted to the specific item type. For example, there used to be a weapon pool, now there is an assault rifle pool, and the assault rifle pool has four pools for each of the inscription types listed above, which is essentially major primary, minor primary, major secondary, and minor secondary. The primary inscriptions are focused on damage or survivability. Any item specific inscription which will have a gear icon will always benefit the item they are on. A javelin wide inscription, a suit icon will benefit damage or survivability across the whole javelin, so it will apply to everything that you've got. Secondary inscriptions focus on utility and can be targeted to the item gears icon or the entire javelin suit icon. Now for those that are slightly confused as to what this all is, so if you look at destiny, in year 2 they introduce random rolls. What does this mean? So each weapon has a selection of perks that it can roll. It has the mid tier perk and the main tier perk. And those rolls can be random but they are selected from a selected number of perks. You don't have access to every other perk. So for example, Feeding Frenzy, which is normally associated with heavy machine guns in Destiny with the exception of the Blast Furnace, you won't find it on a hand cannon or you won't find it on a scout rifle. You won't find it on things like this. It is generally specific to heavy machine guns. And that system allows Bungie to maintain a certain order in regards to perks appearing where they should do. In Anthem we didn't have this. Instead, just like the open loot pool system that they employ currently within the game where you can go and do any content and get any piece of loot, the actual rolls applied the same logic. The only problem here is if you have an assault rifle and you get LMG damage, it kind of doesn't make sense. That's broken. So what they've done here is now actually given each individual item its own pool of perks. What this will do in effect is now make each weapon you get as of the loot patch focused on that weapon or item itself. This in turn will greatly assist in getting you those better rolls that you're looking for. So instead of now going and getting 15 masterwork weapons and finding out that they're all trash, you'll find that out of the 5 masterwork weapons you're going to get, 2 of them will probably be a decent roll that you can actually use and build upon. And the other 3 that you're going to break will now assist you in your masterwork ember collection and helping you craft another weapon. So overall what they've done is gone with the option that I said in my last video, they haven't increased the drop rate. Instead what they're doing is making the perks actually matter, more focused, more centralized and more directed. So this way you don't really get a wasted weapon roll on the weapon. Instead it may not be the best roll, 
but it will be something useful that you can take on board and use for the time being. Well, let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you like this new system? Is there anything you would like changed? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll pick out the questions that are thrown at me and forward them to the devs and hopefully we get a response and if I do get a response, I'll let you all know in my next Anthem video. I am now looking to cover the Division as well. I released my first video of this yesterday covering the state of the game. I'm hoping to have more content on that going forward and I am looking to going back and covering Destiny a bit more. So if this is something you're interested, let me know in the comment section below and we can make this happen. Right, thank you for watching and if you found this video useful, drop a like, subscribe, share and until the next video, remain legend.